Let's go over to page 327, please. And we won't go through the vocabulary because we've really talked our way through the vocabulary. So let's start with number two. And is it Hannah's turn? Will you read us number two, please, Hannah? When fruits or vegetables are imported into the U.S. from a foreign country, they are always very closely inspected by it. For insects, even though the vast majority of insects are not very harmful, why is the inspection done? Um, okay. Yes, DJ, help her out. Because if they bring that one insect in, it could mess up the ecosystem again. Very good. I'm going to give you an actual real example that happened here in Florida, apparently before you were born. Medflies. They were called Mediterranean fruit flies. Little bitty, barely can see it fly made such a trauma to the Florida citrus industry that it almost crippled the Florida citrus industry. Just a little bitty insect can really destroy an ecosystem. It's amazing what a, a little change can make. Number three, we will not go through here. Hopefully everybody knows to go to your, uh, your producer, which would be your autotroph, in this case the phytoplankton, and then work your way back. So in this case the paramecium would be a what? Primary consumer, good. And then the whale that eats the paramecium would be what? Secondary, Secondary consumer. But if the whale eats the, phy the phytoplankton itself, it's a primary, primary consumer. So you've got to be able to work your way through those. On the next page, on page 328, number 4, you're supposed to look at the ecological pyramid. Let me tell you this right now. When you do these problems on your test, don't, don't uh, stress. Just look at it and then go, okay, is that half the size or is it, you know? And just estimate. Don't stress and go, ah, oh, i got to get percentages. That's not the case, okay? So don't stress. Just, you know, look at it. If you want to, make a little paper and go, okay, this one's this long. This one's half of that, you know. So just do it that way. Um, it says, what two trophic levels have the greatest disparity in biomass? Now, I had students, they went, what's a disparity? And I understand, if you hit a word that you're not sure what it means, and that word is not a vocabulary word, I want you to go get a dictionary or ask your parents. I don't want you to miss a science question because there was a regular word that he used that you weren't familiar with, okay? Disparity means the greatest difference. So where do we see the greatest difference in biomass here between which two groups? Producers and... Uh... No, no, on this picture. The bottom one's producers. The... Oh. Ah, on this one. Good. Look at this one. Where do we see the biggest change? Remember that bottom one's producers, the next one up's primary consumers, the next one's up secondary consumers, the next one's up tertiary. Primary and secondary. Good. Primary to secondary, and that would be your answer. Then it says between which two trophic levels is the smallest amount of energy wasted? Secondary. I think the producer to the primary is what he's looking for there. Yes. Is this um, like overall energy loss or like the percent? It's tri strictly tropic levels. So that would be your producer, primary consumer. And it's the energy loss, not looking at what the decomposers are eating. Okay. Okay? Okay. All right, so Josh, I'm going to let you read number five, please. Name the participants in the three new symbiotic rela relationships that we learned in this module. Briefly describe. Grab the role of the Thank you. I'm not going to ask you to do that because of our time, but you guys should know that the clownfish and the sea anemone protect one another, and then the, the sea anemone also uses the clownfish as bait. <laughs> um, that with the, um, the goby and the blind shrimp, the blind ship provides the, uh, shrimp provides the home, the goby provides protection, and then in the last case, the Blue Street Wrasse provides a tooth cleaning, and the Oriental Sweet Lips provides dinner. Okay, yes, sir. Who's know the name? Like, to, to, to know, like, it's the Oriental Sweet Lips. Or if you get as close as Sweet Lips and Wrasse, I'll be happy. Okay, but you're supposed to. Yes. Okay, so let's do the next one, please, Zach. What fundamental assumption of macroevolution does mutualism seem to contradict? Good, very good. Survival of the fittest, that basic idea that they shouldn't be helping each other out. They should be eating one another, right? Thank you. Uh, Carrie, would you do number seven for us, please? Yes. Um, in the water cycle of an ocean shore ecosystem, more water evaporates from the ocean than falls back into the ocean in the form of rain. Why doesn't the ocean use water 
Yeah, but the ocean gets water from other sources also. Good. And all the water eventually goes back into the ocean. So thank you very much. <coughs> Michaela? Oh, hang on. Yes. It's surface runoff. Okay. Because it's, it's getting it back. Okay. Uh, what does the water cycle accomplish besides balancing the water in the ecosystem? It transports nutrients. Good. That nutrient transport can be a problem, uh, you know, in certain cases. So, yes, very good. Thank you. Jonathan? Nine. Yes, please. What is the possible consequence if deforestation occurs in a watershed? Uh, too much nutrients? Very good. Way too many nutrients could cause algal blooms, which cause all the fish and pl uh, plants to die that live there. Very dangerous situation. Thank you very much. Uh, it also causes weird plants to grow. So, go ahead, Isaac. Ten. Yes, sir. What is the principal means by which oxygen is taken from the air? What is the principal means by which it is restored to the air? And that's respiration and photosynthesis. Good. It's taken out by respiration. It's put back by photosynthesis. Thank you. Josh? Uh, for number 11. Yes, please. Uh, the name the other way is that oxygen is removed from the air. I wrote uh, photosynthesis and also like burning. Right. He wanted fire, he, ozone uh, production. And I have rust. These are ways of getting rid of it. Photosynthesis makes it. Yeah. So you don't want to have photosynthesis there. Here we're removing it. Okay? Like, like photosynthesis requires oxygen. I got it. No, it produces oxygen. Yeah, yeah, I know that. Okay, no, he's asking how do you remove it. And so to remove it, yeah, that wouldn't be a good answer there. Yeah. Water vapor um, destruction and ozone destruction. That produces water. We're excuse me, that produces oxygen, we're trying to remove it, which means using it up. I think that's where we're getting in trouble. When he says the word removal, he means using it up. Fire. Okay. A fire, yes, was one of them. Ozone production and rust, yes. Uh, let me just run through these with you. Uh, the other ways that oxygen is replenished in the air would be ozone destruction and water vapor destruction. The ways that carbon dioxide is removed from the air is so it's t being taken out, used up, is through photosynthesis and dissolving in the ocean. The ways that carbon dioxide is replenished is through decomposition, fossil fuels being burned, fires and respiration. Human activities that worries those who think that global warming is a problem is burning fuel right, fossil fuels particularly, is global warming really occurring? I would say no. Okay, uh, at least not to the extent that we're being told. What is nitrogen fixing? That's making the nitrogen, putting it into a form that it's more active and therefore can be used. Um, what is, okay, we did that. What type of organisms perform nitrogen, you know, perform nitrogen fixing? That would be nitrogen fixing bacteria. So you could just say bacteria. Uh, what two ways does the nitrogen in an organism get back into the environment? That would be through the waste products and through decomposers putting it back in. Are you okay? I know it's fast and I'm sorry. Uh, make sure you study for it, take the test, and then read the first half of the next module. <laughs>